Ciao. Hi, everyone. And it's Katie here. I'm the founder of Untold Italy Tours and podcast and travel resources. And this is my colleague, Olivia. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you again. (laughs) (laughs) Today, we thought we'd talk to you about amazing trip that we've got planned coming up in Umbria and this is going to be pretty special actually because it's an area that you've spent a bit of time in isn't it Liv? Absolutely yeah it's uh, definitely got a piece of my heart there it's so beautiful and so delicious. (laughs) Ooh, okay so let's just what we're going to do is run through our full itinerary for Umbria and so you can all understand what it's going to be like when we go on tour and just get a real little taster which is a little bit of a joke (laughs) um, of of what's going to happen when we're on tour so we just got a little presentation we're going to run you through and we hope you enjoy it. Amazing. Okay. <sighs> Beautiful. Is there anything more pretty than vines in the fall or the autumn when the leaves are changing colour? No, I don't think so. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it Such really is. Yeah. Mm. I mean, and sometimes when you see photos like this, you think, wow, does it actually look like that? And mm. yeah. It does. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. And I think one thing is about Umbria is, and maybe you can tell everyone where it, Umbria is if they don't know. Yeah, exactly. So Umbria is central Italy. So it's the region that's next to uh, Tuscany, but it is landlocked. They've got a few lakes there as well. Um, and I guess in some ways it's considered as the new Tuscany by people, but it is a region with its own cultural traditions, um, you know, a rich food culture. Um, different sagre that are unique just to Umbra, so they're the food festivals. So, yeah, I think perhaps it paints a bit of a picture if you describe it as the new Tuscany, but also a little bit of a disservice in a way because it's its own amazing region. Um, I guess it's, you know, next to Tuscany and it's a place that doesn't get as many tourists as Tuscany. So it's a little bit on the uh, hidden um, path. So to speak yeah it's flying under the radar i love places like this it's my favorite i love it because then you can go back home and you can say well i found this place you have to go there <laughs> <laughs> and this is what it's all about isn't it all righty so let's just give everyone a quick run through the itinerary and then we'll do a deeper dive perfect so day one we're going to arrive in orvieto in the afternoon just in time for an aperitivo a walking tour uh, we will head into the cathedral of course and then we'll have a delicious dinner Day two, we are hitting the vineyards. So Umbra is a region famous for all the the vineyards and the wines, and we're going to be seeing some hilltop towns. Day three, truffle hunting, pasta, and an olive grove. Day four, artisan Umbrian ceramics and organic wine. Day five, we're going to be learning to make the Umbrian dishes, plus having a trip to Assisi. Day six, medieval Perugia, taste of Umbria, and gorgeous Gubbio. And day seven, artisan chocolate experience and a delicious seasonal lunch. Amazing, amazing. I can't wait to find out more. Let's get on with that. Amazing. My fav- one of my favourite places, actually. Mine too, Katie. I absolutely adore Orvieto. And so that is the, uh, the first destination in Umbria that we're going to be visiting together. So everyone will arrive in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to meet up with a local guide and she's going to give us um, a walking tour through Orvieto and then we'll all sit down for a lovely aperitivo, we'll have our spritz. The biggest question will be, do you want Aperol or Campari? <laughs> uh, and then we'll continue on to a local restaurant for a traditional Umbrian dinner. Um, all, you know, at this beautiful view. Oh, it is really stunning. And you can just see up in this picture, you can see up on the hill of the cathedral. And I think one of the most sort of iconic things about the Umbrian region is these hilltop towns. And Oviedo is more of a city and it's got a very interesting Etruscan past, but it is it is one of these hilltop towns. And you they sit, they're just perched up there, aren't they, on the countryside yeah. and they look down over these amazing scenes. But I think one of the main really important sites that you need to see is this Mm. cathedral because it's absolutely Mm. stunning. It is amazing. And it's sort of just, it's really funny when you come into that piazza, it's just sort of there and it's enormous and it's so beautiful. Um, It kind of takes you by surprise a little bit. 
um or at least I was taken by surprise when I saw it it's amazing yeah it's, and it's huge and I love on the outside it's got the black and white stripes and in the inside so amazing frescoes and some really like evocative ones that make you smile it's like people that look like they're peeking out of the wall it's, I really love that about it I know I wish I was there right now <laughs> Oh, but we'll only be sh there a short time, though, won't we? Yes. Yeah, so we will have to say farewell to Orvieto, but there are a lot of other places waiting to be discovered in Umbria. So day two, um, we're going to have a little stop before we go on to our next place of accommodation, and we're going to this beautiful family-run organic winery, which is nestled in between um, Lake Trasimeno and Orvieto, so it's a perfect stop along the way. Um, and actually, so you might know Orvieto as being famous for red wines, but they also have some amazing white wines. So this is a winery that really specializes in the white wines. Um, so we're going to be having a tasting, we're going to be having a tour of the winery, uh, and then we're also going to be having a sit-down um, wine digger station paired with delicious organic goat's cheeses uh, and local salumi. So, yeah, that's going to be very special as well. <laughs> yeah, and I think for people uh, that uh, don't know Umbria so well, I think the one thing that uh, it's really, really well known for is its pork products and the salumi. And, mm. you know, I remember the last time we were in Rome and we went to this place in the Campo di Fiori, actually, mm. and it's a salumeria that's focused 100% on products from this region and they are very famous for it and um, let me tell you products so, are delicious it's <laughs> so, so good <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know like the good thing is like we do like to have a, a really nice meal and wine and it's all sort of balanced out with a bit of walking isn't it Absolutely. Yeah, exactly right. So after we have our lovely um, wine tasting and a bite to eat, we're going to be continuing on to another beautiful hilltop town called Toddy. Um, and, you know, look at this picture. It's just like this. It's magical. So you have some free time there to wander, take all the photos that you want to take, um, walk off a bit of that wine and the lunch and just soak in the atmosphere. Oh, it's such a pretty place. I love those sort of, like, they're not quite yellow. There's just that creamy mm. coloured stone. Oh, yeah. so pretty. I love it. So beautiful. Oh. Okay. Oh. Now, this is a bit of a surprise packet, isn't it? Because I don't think people really know that you can get yeah. truffles in other parts of Italy apart from your mm. home region, yeah. which is Piemonte. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, in fact, Umbria uh, is a region that is quite famous for their truffles as well when you're in Italy. So yeah, perhaps um, tourists might not always know that. But yeah, the Umbrians absolutely have their fair share of truffles as well. Um, and so we couldn't help but include, of course, a truffle hunt. So day three, we'll start, um, you know, in, in the forest looking for these little nuggets of gold. So the black truffles, um, and they actually do have some white truffles in Umbria as well. So we'll see what we find. Um, we're going to have the local, yeah, the local truffle hunter and the dog. And, you know, that's a beautiful relationship to see as well. Um, and just really exciting. It's something, you know, so part of the culture in Umbria as well as, you know, where I'm from in Piemonte. So we'll do that. And then, of course, we'll have to taste test them. Here we go. We'll have a delicious lunch. Um, and then afterwards, we're going to be walking it all off through an olive grove. So we'll be in a town called Trevi, which is really famous for their olive oil, as well as their salary, which is an interesting uh, side note. Um, so yeah, we're going to be focusing on the olive oil in the afternoon, walking through this beautiful olive grove, doing a tasting and really learning about how extra virgin olive oil is produced in Umbria. And this is something that the region is really famous for, olive oil. Mm, olive oil. I think when you get into the middle section of Italy, that's when olive oil becomes much more important than in the north where you're from. So, yeah, yeah, it's really interesting to compare the different techniques and traditions that they use in the different regions because it is different in Umbria than in Puglia, for example, or yeah. in Sicily. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm, okay, so after Trevi, oh. next day. So this is super special as well. So day four, we're going to be visiting some artisans uh, in a little town called Deruta, which is famous. It's really the heart of Umbrian ceramics. 
Um, so you can see some beautiful ceramics there. We'll all have a chance to go and meet some artisans uh, and actually see how some of these ceramics are made. And we're not talking about big factories here, like where all the bus tours go through. We're talking about real artisan producers where you'll have a chance to, um, to speak to the artisan as well. And then, of course, you'll have some free time to do a little bit of a wander, a little bit of shopping if you like. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's very tempting. These ceramics are absolutely stunning and they're not easy to find in other places in Italy um, from Umbria or abroad. Mm, no, I mean, I have looked and it's really, <laughs> you really need to find a specialist importer and even then I really found it hard because I, want, I really wanted a specific piece um, for serving up delicious salads and I couldn't find it so I just need to go back to Deruta. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, now you know Umbria is also a region very famous for its wine so we're sneaking in another wine visit so I mentioned before that our first winery uh, is more going to be focused on white wine so this winery is more famous for their Sagrantino which is the typical red wine of Umbria um, and it's, you know, in the region where we'll be staying, Montefalco. So it's the Montefalco Sagrantino. Um, and again, this is a small family run winery, organic. We're not going to any of those sort of bigger commercial wineries, which will have a place. But yeah, we're really focusing on these um, sort of smaller family run places where you actually have a chance to speak to the winemaker themselves um, and have a little bit more of an intimate experience, I guess. Mm, and they all have such a wonderful story to tell. And I think. <laughs> You know, when you hear those and you make a connection with those people, that's what makes your trip so very special. Mm -hmm. Agree. Okay. <laughs> Keeping yeah. going on these hilltop towns, they just don't stop and they're just absolutely <laughs> stunning. And you have to see all of them really because they've all got their own sort of little flavour and spell. Look, I have to say it's, I think it's my favourite hilltop town in Umbria. It's so beautiful. Aspello, of course, is famous for um, in the June, in the spring, they've got this amazing flower festival. Um, and so it really it's a city obsessed with flowers. You'll see when we go that there's flower pots just everywhere decorating the city. Um, and it's just very charming. When I say city, I should say town. It's tiny. Um, it's very charming. It's just, yeah, it's absolutely uh Beautiful. So we'll be definitely visiting Spello. You have some free time. Um, you can, you know, go for a wander. You can go for an aperitivo, a light dinner. Uh, the choice is yours. Mm. What could anything be more perfect? I love wandering these little towns. They're just so charming. Yeah. And if you wanted to hear about which places to go, in fact, one of our earlier podcast episodes, there's definitely, which you're in the notes below, uh, you can find out where to go. But we'll tell you that too, of course. We'll give yeah. you all hot tips. Yeah. <laughs> all righty the next one next one we're starting the day uh donning an apron rolling up our sleeves and learning to make some of these traditional ombrian dishes um in the hills of assisi uh, with this beautiful uh cooking school so it, again is family run it's run by a local woman letizia um and we're going to be making some traditional dish dishes like the one that you see on the screen the string got see pasta as well as some other specialties uh so yeah bring your appetites because that is going to be an absolute feast yeah that looks amazing i love how there's so many different pastas like you could literally do a pasta tour of italy yep. probably last yeah. about 20 years <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh but we need an appetite because what are we doing then after that we do. So this is one of the big highlights, of course, of the trip to Umbria. So we couldn't go without visiting one of the most famous towns, which is Assisi. So we're going to be meeting up again with the local guide who will tour us around, um, bring the, this town to life for us. You'll also have free time. So, you know, you'll have a chance to wander by yourself and explore after we've met up with the guide and, you know, she's really brought Assisi to life for us. Yes, of course. So Assisi has been long been on the pilgrim route uh, because it was the birthplace of St. Francis. And, yeah, it's a, just a beautiful town in itself. It's like two cathedrals in the complex. <laughs> they were greedy. They had to have two. Um, but I, I think it's just a beautiful town in its own right. And, um, yeah, yeah, it would be remiss not to include it on any trip to Umbria. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. onto this amazing piazza. 
Day six, so we're going to be in Perugia. Perugia is, again, I mean, I could just keep saying that all of these places are one of my favourites because they're all so beautiful and Perugia uh, is no exception. It is a town famous for chocolate um, and, yeah, it's a fun university town as well. It's very charming. It's quite small and compact and so day six we're going to be meeting up with a local to go on a food and history walking tour. Uh, I can't think of you know, a better tour that, that puts, you know, both of those things together. It will really bring the stories to life as we, you know, taste a little bit, um, some truffles here, some chocolate here, uh, some wine here. So it's going to be really fun. Mm, sounds amazing. Mm. Okay. Yeah, some of these delicacies, like really, really well known for their um, salumi and Absolutely. cured meats. Mm. Very delicious. Mm. Mm. Those oh. pigs must be fed very well, I think. Lots of truffles maybe or even chestnuts, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yum. But we'll find all about that on our tour. Okay. And then in the afternoon, we're off to another little hilltop town. So in the afternoon, we're going to a town called Gubb. And it's just very charming, very quaint. Um, it's lovely, really. And we're going to be again meeting up with a local guide who will bring Gubbio to life for us. I think, you know, you can't underestimate um, the privilege, really, of having someone with all the knowledge of these towns, tourists around, because there's just so many stories. Um, so that will be really, that will be really, really lovely. Yeah, these stories and legends, are, it, it always shocks me actually just how detailed they go back because you know they much like Romeo and Juliet they have warring families and intrigues and ghosts and people throwing themselves off towers I mean it's quite you know you can make yeah. movies out of it for sure so or, or definitely write novels so yeah. look I feel like you know, once upon a time I never used to use local guides, but now I'm so passionate about it because you really do get a real flavour of the place yeah. that you're visiting when you hear those stories being told. Absolutely okay. agree. Okay, then we have one very important thing to do the next day, don't we? Chocolate. Yes, chocolate. As I was saying, Perugia is absolutely famous for their chocolate. They have a big chocolate festival every year. And so, yeah, we have to include a special chocolate tasting on our trip to Perugia. So we'll be starting the morning on a sweet note, visiting a local, um, you know, family-run chocolatier, doing a tasting and chatting to them about how the chocolate's produced and how it's made. Yeah, because there is a very famous factory um, in Perugia where they make the famous Bachi Kisses chocolate. Yes. However, it's, the really important thing about the town is it has a long-standing tradition of these artisan techniques. And so I think the factory is now, it's owned by a company called Perugina, which is actually owned mm. by Nestle. So it's only definitely in the more um, commercialised right. chocolate. But, you know, these kind this place we're visiting, they make their chocolates fresh every day and they have, you yeah. know, special dedication to their craft, which, you know, can't really yeah. be replaced. Absolutely. And then final oh, lunch. Yeah, exactly. So we'll wrap it all up um, with a beautiful long lunch under the under the sun or under the vines, um, you know, reflecting on this amazing week that we've had together, enjoying some of the Umbrian dishes that we've fallen in love with, maybe trying a few new things because the, the cuisine is so rich, there's so many things to try. Uh, and, of course, a delicious glass of wine. As we say, salute. Uh, and then we'll be back off to Perugia and that's that's the end of the trip. Yeah, but the thing is about Perugia is it's really well connected by train, yeah. so you can connect into Florence or Rome and continue your journey from there. And that's the same with Orvieto as well. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the beautiful things about Umbria is that it's, it's just kind of hiding in plain sight, just yeah. behind, <laughs> behind these iconic cities and regions. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those things where just, you know, we couldn't help but include this in our tours because we really wanted people to get a real taste of this really special region that sort of you know keeps to its own self but is very special nonetheless absolutely can't wait no i know can't wait okay so if you're interested in joining us on tour and we would love you to then you can go across to our tours website at tours.untolditaly.com forward slash umbria and you can see the full itinerary broken down for you there and all the costs etc and if you've got any questions do feel free to reach out that's all for us today. Ciao for now. Ciao.